This is the actual texture of my actual hair and if you say anything about it, I will cry. Alrighty friends, it is the final week of the month again. You know what that means. It's style study time. And today's video is really interesting because this is an artist I only came across thanks to a comment requesting this video and I've been obsessed with her work ever since. Today we're taking a look at the gorgeous horror but also cute art of Ashley Ijanicki. I hope I said that right. Better known by her online name, Miss You Pacey. I hope I said that right. Like I said, this video was requested about a year ago so massive thank you to teacups not just for requesting this video but also for introducing me to Ashley's work I have found so much inspiration from it if this is your very first style study please do listen to the rest of this intro but if you're a style study veteran thank you so so much for coming back I love you and you can go ahead and skip to part one timestamps are in the video description below but if this is your very first style study hi welcome my name is Frish and I am so glad you're here today because we're gonna level up your art by like a million percent. Style Study is a regular series we do here on my channel where we take a look at some of our favorite contemporary artists, analyze their work and see what we can learn from it. Keyword, learn. We're not here to plagiarize someone's style or copy someone's work. We're only here to learn from their work and see what we can find in terms of interesting techniques and tips and apply to finding our own original art style. I usually structure my style studies in three parts. In part one, we'll take a look at Ashley's work, analyze her style and see what we can learn from it. Part two will be a study of one of her original paintings. The super cool reference I've chosen today is this one. How cool is that? And in part three, we'll apply everything that we learned today to an original painting of our own. And I'm gonna be honest, I fell in love with how this came out. As always, if you enjoyed this video and learned something today, then please do remember to like and subscribe. Maybe even leave a little comment below. It really helps me out so, so much. But now if you're ready, grab a snack, sit back, and let's dive into another style study featuring Miss You Pacey. Ashley Ijanicki is an American illustrator currently based in California. I actually didn't know this, but she is also a tattoo artist and graduated from the Laguna College of Art and Design. She has an adorable good boy named Bjorn, and she kept her maiden name just to bamboozle non-Polish people. Can confirm it worked. Also, here is a tweet that speaks to the very depths of my soul. But we're here to speak about her absolutely stunning art because oh my god, look at it. There is not one painting here that is not incredibly intricate or just entirely mesmerizing. Her beautiful body of work has garnered Ashley over 587,000 followers on Instagram and over 16.2 thousand followers over on Twitter. Ashley's art is what I would call dark fantasy character illustrations. There is a horror, almost macabre vibe to her work, and the vast majority of it is centered around the character. In fact, you'll find that a lot of her characters are deeply rooted in mythology. Of course, there are the literal mythological figures such as Nyx and Bastet, but even in her other paintings, you have a lot of symbolism from old myths such as devil horns, pentagrams, angel wings, hellhounds, and fairies. It is all very occult, but what gets me most is how visceral her work is. Not only are these dark pieces, they are seriously appealing. And so today's video is going to be a study in appealing design, because looking at her art, you'll find that it is very sensualist. Speaking of lists, here are five key characteristics to Ashley's work. The cat 
So, like we just saw, a lot of Ashley's work features these super appealing, idealized characters, mostly women. So, they have very idealistic body types with strong, curvy hips and breasts, a slim waist, graceful arms, and voluptuous thighs. They are posed in an almost pin up y way, which really enhances the shape of the body, thus, further pushing the sensuality. And when we zoom into the faces, we see the usual style. Stylization suspects. You have eyes that are large and rounded, a minimized nose, a soft jaw and rounded chin, and four plump lips. These are all known to give the face a very soft, almost baby like appearance, which is a huge part of feminine appeal. However, when you really pay attention, you see that there are some very powerful stylistic choices that actually contradict all this soft roundness. The eyebrows, for instance, Are almost always slanted downwards towards the center of the face, with the arch and tail quite high and pointy. This is the quickest way to show almost a mean, angry side to the character. A great exaggerated example of this is Jafar. See how his eyebrows slant straight down and the arch is super high? That gives him a perpetually angry look. And you know that this is a purposeful choice Ashley makes with the more sinister. Characters, because in something like this painting, the brows go in almost the opposite way, showing innocence. Plus, while the eyes are bigger than in a realistic face, they are still quite high up on the face. A lot of the times, artists will pull these eyes quite low on the face to enhance that youthful baby face look, but in choosing to keep them high up in the face, Ashley is definitely keeping a sense of maturity in her characters, again, very. Away from that innocent look. Add in some long, dark, fluttery eyelashes and a super plump, glossy lip, and pair these with a seductive expression, and you have a super appealing face that is most definitely not a children's character. As you may have guessed by now, the major point of focus in Ashley's art is usually the character. But what is it that makes the character so dynamic, even against a flat background? I think the most important attribute here is the silhouette. You'll notice that no matter what the character or pose, the silhouette is a huge part of telling the story. And it's not just the actual shapes in the silhouette that have an impact, it is also the negative. Space. Here, for instance, you'll see that the petals in her skirt create this cascading rhythm of negative space as we go up from shadow to light. Here, the points of overlap between the upper and lower wings almost act like arrows leading inwards towards the character. And my personal favorite is this one. Sure, the big horse creates a spiral that leads to the character, but if you look closely, there is a negative space between the character and the horse. And if you apply your imagination a little bit, that is a horse. Oh my god. I'm sorry, I refuse to believe that that was an accident. Another important silhouette attribute is the value contrast. Where the character has a darker edge, it is usually against a bright background. Where there is a bright edge, it is against a dark background. This is the perfect piece to exemplify this, where the bright hair stands out against the dark sky. And even though her skin is dark, it is still a lot brighter in comparison to the sky, but this is another value point I want to talk about. Sometimes you'll find that the contrast is lower in some areas. Like here, for instance, the mermaid tail stands out nicely up here, but it's a lot less of a contrast as it goes into the shadows. And this is an amazing, super subtle way to use lighting as a means of focus. Your eyes are automatically going to seek out the areas of higher contrast because that is where most of the information lies. And boom, subtle leading lines.
Okay, let's get into the storytelling. In pretty much all of her work, you'll find that Ashley uses a lot of interesting storytelling elements that add a nice edge to the characters, so they're not just your standard pretty girls. Of course, there is nothing wrong with a standard pretty girl, but that is not Ashley's style. You'll see things like piercings, chokers, fangs, spiky nails, lots of gothic jewelry and clothing, and also tattoos, all of which add a ton of personality. Plus, like we saw in the first point, there's those heavily arched pointy eyebrows and you'll sometimes even see a slit in them. The clothing is often very sensual, with lots of low-cut tops, garters, thigh-high stockings, extremely short skirts, stuff that you'd wear in a not-so-public setting. All of these design choices put together make her character seem very bold and out there, and we as a society are obviously taught to be afraid of bold women who wear whatever they like. This to me is the real horror in her paintings. Imagine a woman wearing clothes, jewelry, and makeup she likes. Ooh, that is 10 years of therapy right there. Okay, focus swish. You'll also notice that the hair is rather flowy and messy. It is pretty much never sleek and straight. This gives us the illusion of the characters being in motion rather than being perfectly still and proper. This is actually a really nice way of injecting life into a still image. And to really tie up the edgy vibe, you'll sometimes see that there is blood spatter on the character, especially around the mouth or the face. Here's the thing, the face and mouth are usually parts that we would cover if we knew there was going to be blood or any bodily fluid splattering about. That would be our general passive instinct. So to have it in these areas, such as the mouth and the face, makes us think that these characters were actively involved in the splattering. I'm saying these characters are vampires. Or cannibals, take your pick. This is the part that, for me, really seals the style. The line work in Ashley's art is actually super variable. If you know where to look, you'll see that the line art depends on the lighting. Let's first look at some of the lines that are fixed so they stay the same across all of her paintings. You pretty much always have thick eyeliner and heavy lashes and lines in the eyebrows. You always have silhouette lines that border the character's edges and that is about all that stays fixed. All the other line placements depend on A, the pose and angle, and B, the lighting. The best example of this is the black drop shadow under the character's jaw. See how the angles shift and change based on the lighting? This is the clearest indicator of a light source in Ashley's art. In fact, you'll also find that although you do have silhouette lines in all her paintings, the thickness of these lines is quite variable. Now, you know me, you know, I can't just believe that she randomly thickens some silhouette lines and makes the others thin. Everything has to have a reason behind it. And so I spent some time trying to figure this out until it hit me. The thick lines appear in areas that she wants us to think are solid and strong, while the thin lines are in the more delicate areas. One excellent example of this is with the hair. You'll see that large head defining sections of hair will have a thicker border, while the little wispy strands have very delicate lines. But my absolute favorite example of it is this piece, more specifically the belly. If you look at the border of the flat edge, you'll see that it is nice and thick, indicating indicating some solid core strength, but on this side the lines are thinner, showing us the delicate nature of her curves. A nice juxtaposition to this character. So the lines aren't just there to add structure to the composition, they are actually an integral part of storytelling. Hey buddy, you okay? Hello? Okay, you're just gonna ignore me then.
Speaking of storytelling, let's quickly go over the background in her paintings. Like we've seen so far, the background is generally flat and nondescript. I don't mean that it is always a solid colour, but rather that you don't have the whole foreground, midground, background debacle, and the rendering is often relatively flat. Most of the definition in the background comes, again, from silhouettes and negative space. So here, for instance, you have a bunch of raven design motifs in the back that create some striking negative space. Here you have some fish, all of which are flatly rendered, and here you have a little leafy action, again super flat. But what is the most important attribute that all of these have in common? Is it A, they are all elements of nature, B, they are all a very different colour to the character, or C, they all add some nice small shapes to the composition? I'll give you five seconds to think. If you answered A or B, you are wrong. If you answered C, however, you are also wrong. The most important thing that these elements have in common is that they all serve to tell the character story. Often in art, we will first create the world and then create characters that fit into said world. And in design terms, the characters are often designed with the background in mind. So think of something like post-apocalyptic steampunk. You're immediately thinking of goggles to protect the eyes from dust, giant capes or long sleeves to protect the skin from radiation, and so on and so forth. But all of these character design choices are determined by the background. In Ashley's art though, it is the opposite. She first designs the character, say the Grim Reaper, and then adds in background elements to further tell the character's story, say a black dog and a graveyard. And it always comes back to the same point, you guys. Her art is almost always most heavily focused on telling the character story. So to sum up part one, here are the five key characteristics to Ashley's art. Number one, she uses very idealized proportions to give these characters the appeal of traditional beauty. However, you always see a nice balance of soft rounded elements and pointy edgy ones. Two, the silhouette plays a huge role in helping the character stand out against the background. She places dark silhouette elements against a lighter background or vice versa in the areas of primary focus. Number three, Ashley uses a lot of compositional elements such as piercings, tattoos, messy hair and blood spatter to add a ton of personality and edge to these characters to take them beyond just being pretty faces and idealized bodies. For the line work is often variable, depending both on the lighting and on the perceived strength of a design element. And number five, the background is often relatively flat, but is pretty much always there to tell the character's story. For our study today, this is the reference that I've chosen. This was part of the naughty and nice Cupid headshot she did, and I of course went with the naughty one. And right off the bat, let me tell ya, I struggled. You know, Swish and line art is a tough combination, it's like putting a dolphin on a bicycle, it's just not gonna go places. However, I did try, you guys, and it was tough to get the proportions right. I specifically went with a piece that has the eyes closed, because that is my personal kryptonite. I can't place the rest of the face right if I don't have wide open eyes, so that was definitely a challenge. However, once I did get the lines down, the rest of the piece actually came together quite quickly. There was very little rendering to do, and while that may seem easy on the surface, let me tell you, the one thing I learned through this process specifically was brush control. It is so easy to just go in and render everything realistically, but that is not the style here. With this one, we want to keep the shading to a minimum and let the lines do all the talking. 
I did three iterations of the line art by the way. The first was a rough sketch, the second was a more refined set of lines which I then used for the base rendering and then I went in with a line art pen brush and the stabilizer to really get those crisp, fluid, clean lines. Also, do you guys ever like watch something while painting and then that show or video is forever associated with said painting? Cause I was watching some Danny Gonzalez videos while painting this and I just had the most vivid flashback while watching back this painting process. Anyway, here is the finished study and for my very first attempt at this style, I'm actually quite impressed. Okay friends, this is where the magic really happened. As it turns out, line art is actually a lot of fun if you're not trying to recreate someone else's line work. I'm not usually one to draw elf characters, it's just never been an archetype that appealed to me so much, but here I kind of wanted to experiment with the dark elf archetype, but I also wanted a little cascade repetition effect in the silhouette like we saw with that flower skirt character before. So I actually gave her three earlobes. Girl's gonna hear the 12th dimension. With this one, I did add a little more rendering to her, just cause I've seen that in some of Ashley's work and mama loves me some rendering. I definitely wanted a supernatural skin tone, but also a bit of hue variation to still keep it looking like skin. Of course we had to have those specular highlights cause it just adds instant polish to the character. With the background, I first thought of keeping it flat, maybe with some floating specks, but that felt too drab and wasn't giving her enough story. And then I remembered the whole light against dark thing, so I grabbed a flat black and added almost a wave-like background shape and threw in some building silhouettes just for some interest. I also created some smoky clouds, almost making it look like she'd just burnt a village down and was walking away from it. But regardless, I'm like in love with her, you guys. Like I actually want to be her friend, oh my goodness. But yeah, here's the finished original painting for today. And there we have it, Miss You Pacey Demystified. Now, if by any chance you haven't checked out Ashley's work before, I highly, highly recommend doing it. I always leave links to all the artists that I study in the description below, but this specifically, this artist, I highly recommend you check her out. There is so much inspiration to be found. Thank you so much again to Teacups for recommending this artist. I hope you've enjoyed it and that it's been everything you've been looking for. And if the rest of you guys have enjoyed this video as well and learn something today please do remember to like and subscribe it really helps the channel out so so much which of your favorite artists would you like to see featured on a style study first i'll leave my style study playlist up here somewhere in the outro check that out because chances are i've probably covered some of your favorite artists already but if not then please feel free to leave it a comment below letting me know which artists you'd like to see a style study on and i'll add them to my ever-growing list come say hi on instagram and discord and if you'd like to support the channel directly make sure you check out my patreon i'll leave all of the links in the description below but that's about all i want to say today so thank you so so much for hanging out with me today i hope you've enjoyed it as much as i have check out some more style studies up here and i'll see you guys on the next one bye